The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Hello and welcome to another Soccer to the Max, as we are here to discuss, of course, MLS Week 22 action. Uh, the last game just finished about two hours ago, uh, so we'll go through, kind of give our thoughts on most of the games here. Some of them were blowouts, so we not uh, talk too much on them. Plus, I think Eric's watched a lot more than I have. Uh, this was a busy weekend for me and then having three games on a Sunday when I worked through one and a half of them is kind of difficult and no Rachel today she had a family emergency she has to tend to so hopefully uh, that comes out okay and she'll get to join us next week so I'll have to kind of just run us through the NWSL stuff so we won't we won't get a full breakdown of NWSL action but Eric how are you after our Thursday show. You know, let's just say Saturday was very, very quirky. Quirky to the point to where sitting back and watching the games today was a r- appropriate recovery. See, I always had to, uh, good to have a reason to, to be able to go in there and watch those games, you know, so... Exactly, especially when you forget to go to bed until 5 a.m. Yeah, that was, yeah. Oh, I think I fell asleep at like around 2, and I was thinking I was going to stay up, and mm-hmm. that did not happen either. So I yeah, See, for me, it was the exact opposite. I came home at 2, and I'm thinking, oh, I can crash. And then I found myself watching Lockup for a couple of hours. <laughs> Lockup, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and we also have uh, both of Eric's teams made some transfer news uh, this week. As again, the transfer window closes, I think, on Wednesday. So perhaps some more moves will be happening by the time they kick off uh, some games. Or one game, the U.S. Open Cup game between the Sporting and San Jose. So we'll have one game to talk about there. Will be the next time we do a show. So uh, that being said, we might as well go ahead and begin with the game that most recently ended here. Sporting KC had pretty much been. Ahead for most of this game. They were controlling the game. Atlanta really hadn't done a whole lot for the most part. The the sporting defense had contained them. And then here comes a late flurry. And Atlanta gets a goal from a former Sporting KC player. In about the 91st minute. And Atlanta goes to Sporting. And gets a 1-1 draw, a tough place to play. Uh, A team, one of the few teams that are still undefeated on the season at home. Man, Atlanta's (laughs) definition of turning that switch on at the right moment. I I wouldn't even say turning the switch on. That was just a very, very lucky run of play from them. Because even though... Kansas City, defensively, they were on point all throughout the match. And offensively, very few chances, but they had key runs like from that of a Gerso who, on his last touch in the match, nearly made it 2-0, which would have made me a little bit happier. But they just had this one opportunity, not even a breakdown along that back line, just that little bit inside the 18, and there it was. Uh, he steps through a player. The ball kind of bounces the back off him, and then he scores, and you're like, well, if that isn't one of the luckiest goals there. If you're living uh, right, that happens. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that was just one of those, like, damn, we really could have had three points here. Drop two points, luckily for them. FC Dallas goes to Philadelphia and gets blown out again. I don't know. They usually have some of these gaffes where you're like, all right, mm-hmm. you know, you're. they always do this during the season. They can never be consistent. They always have like a period where they kind of have a slump, and this seems to be it. But I don't understand with a group full of veterans – how Dallas two games now losing by you know it's a combined six goals just now uh, to be fair in this one there was a little bit of a deflation when VAR came into play on the match first Rooster time goal yep first time they Ref made the TV signal. They found, yep, uh, there's a little bit of a no-no and waved off that goal. So that put a little extra boost into the union. They just took it from there. Yeah, CJ Sapong had a terrific uh, goal again uh, for Philadelphia. He just keeps having magical moments for this team. And Philadelphia, again, they just... They have this way at home of winning, and it's, I think this is more about Philadelphia once again playing really well. They've mm-hmm. been consistent for the most part this season. FC Dallas just, or at least recently, Philadelphia has been much more consistent uh, after they made some changes. Dallas just, I don't know what's going on. I, this is just weird, two games like this. And, yeah, like you said, yeah, the deflation's there, but just, man, it just it doesn't seem like the same Dallas team we've been watching. I don't know if it's a switch they got to flip or what it is, but, I mean, come on, you're the Supporter Shield winner from last year. You didn't really lose anyone. You got Mauro Diaz back. Should be expecting a little bit better than this. Yeah, not to mention you're now locked in a four-way tie for second place. Three points off from scoring Kansas City in the West. There is just no room for error right now. Yeah, exactly. You could wind up down fifth or sixth if you're not careful really quick. So Yeah, you gotta even be... af- after the sporting KC result, you look at the standings, first through seventh are separated by six points. No bueno. No. If you're a team that's kind of on the downturn, not good, especially when Seattle is going into Minnesota and blowing out the... They really should have had more goals, honestly. They They, they should have, but I mean, it's to the point. Dempsey, Morris, look at what everybody did up front and Minnesota. It's Minnesota. So it's just so weird this season. Like, so weird. They'll have games where they look like an actual good team. Then they have games where they get blown out like this. And you're going, what in the hell? This this is... I, I've seen my share of Minnesota sports. This is exactly what I expect. They did have a new center back pairing back there too, which didn't help them. But <laughs> still, just that—that's kind of putting it mildly, but okay. <laughs> I know. I'm just, I'm just look. Seattle's been on a tear recently. Uh, they, people have been saying, "Oh, Seattle, they've been kind of slumming it recently," and here you go. They instead just decided, "Oh, you guys thought we were kind of coasting." No, sir. No, we are not. Here we are. Just we have now arrived. Prepare to get whooped <laughs> yeah, by in Seattle. And they're one of those teams in that four-way tie. So if I'm anybody else in the West, I'm a little scared. Yeah, be scared. This is your 
MLS champs coming on now. And really don't want to mess with them at this point. They are, uh, like, this it seems like everybody's starting to get on with it. I mean, Jordan Morris, Clint Dempsey coming off those the Gold Cup. Christian Roldan comes home from the Gold Cup and starts playing well. That defense has been pretty good. Yeah, Jovan Jones is already pre-signed with the Germans, you know, second division club, but he's going to keep on his terrific form. So watch it. Watch out again. You know, Rachel's not here, but mm-hmm. her team doing well here. It, it, at least somebody's got a team that's doing pretty well so far. Hey, DC went and drew with Toronto at RFK. Forgot, you know. Which was a shock. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. It's kind shock. of a shock that pisses me off even more. But oh god, you and your wanting them to lose. I mean, well, it, it's a thing, and I'll keep saying, I don't want them to lose for the purpose of tanking. I just want them to lose so they realize how miserable they are. And what do they do to spite me? They go ahead and go 1-1 with arguably one of the best 2-3 teams in the league. At RFK, no less. What am I supposed to think? Isn't that how it always happens? You think uh, that, You think you know. And then you have no idea. Hmm. Look, watch them do their thing here. And DC United was also making moves here. Or or for some, they're about to make some moves. Uh, they have signed Bruno Miranda, the forward, uh, who's Bolivian. He he uh, was on, he's on loan from Universidad de Chile. And they do have an option to sign him permanently if things go well for DC. And they are also in the mix to sign midfielder Zoltan Stiver. Or Stiver. However you say that there. He's 28. He played recently for the for Kaiserslautern in the German 2nd Division. He's Hungarian and he was with Hungary at the... Uh, Euros in 2016. DC well, United does have good experience with Hungarian players in the past. Hashtag Storchkov. So, I mean... I and Bolivians with uh, Moreno. I get it. I... See, I'm torn. I get it. And there's a part of me that hopes it works. But then there's this overriding bitterness that I don't like it because they're trying. Why try <laughs> again? Now? Like, what is wrong with trying at any point? Unless you're saying that they're trying at the end of the season, like you know, with two we're, games left or something. You're two thirds of the way home. I, it, you're. Got but this is MLS. That, so many things can happen. Really, really, really. Mm. Yes, really. Mm. It just, no, no. Just like I know I've watched Minnesota sports, I've lived in D.C. and their sport. No, no, no. no. Okay, let's look at this here. They are, way, okay, they're, yeah, they're way down there with 19 points. There's probably no way. The worst, don't they have the worst record in MLS right now? Well, yeah, they have the least amount of points in MLS, yes. Alrighty then. This isn't like West Ham 15 years ago or close to it, where they were bottom of the Premier League at Christmas and managed to stay up. There's no great escape going on here. It, it's You're done. You're sunk. I know, but all you have to do here is... Just make a run and at least get close to that line. You know, you're probably not catching Atlanta and any, anything above Atlanta. But, I mean, Columbus has been faltering. And the, all the other teams there behind Columbus have kind of been up and down. So if D.C. goes on a run, you never know. 
Do you really think this team is capable of getting on a run other than miserable failure? Probably not, but hey, you know what? New signings could play a part. Excited to see Stever or Stiver and Miranda in there and see if they add some kind of infusion. Miranda's very young, uh, so you know we'll see if he plays. Or not, but at this point, if you're Ben Olsen, what do you have to lose? So, I mean, just put him in there and, and see what happens. Or uh, the or the big wigs will probably wait and save him for the shiny new stadium and blah, 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 blah. Ugh. Punch. Chicago go to a league-leading 10 wins at home after they blasted New York or not New York, the New England Revolution 4-1. New England can't stop a fly going into their defensive backfield at this point. I and mean, you know seriously. what was even the scarier part of that 4-1 win? No Nikolic. Wow. Think about that. You've got a guy that's still on pace to at least get close to the MLS goal-scoring record for a single season. He doesn't hit the sheet, yet they still score four. New England are still the only Eastern Conference team that have not won away from home yet. I don't think they're going to. Just sad at this point. Eight losses away from home. I mean, yeah, they do pretty well <laughs> at home, but it's still just ridiculous how they cannot stop anyone. How can you expect to make it to the playoffs if you're not holding people to, you know, to goals? I mean, they're basically having to outscore everyone to get wins. Yeah. Put three or four up front and pray that you can score five every match. That's how you gotta. It's not happening against Chicago and some of the better teams. I mean, no, it's not. But I mean, if this is the strategy you've got, I mean, go back to the old early twentieth century two three five formation. If this is how you're gonna play, go all out. If this if or I don't know. <laughs> Probably not gonna happen that way, but. They're not doing it's, much better. It's not, but I mean, and again, until you have the organization that cares and says, hey, maybe we need to fix this problem, this is the situation you're in. And, yeah, I mean, speaking of being in situations, Orlando losing in oh. Montreal 2-1 thanks to a substitute goal. I mean, what's okay. going on here, Eric? Kudos to Kyle Laren, youngest player in MLS history to 40 career goals. Welcome back. You apparently got your head right and you're scoring, but I can't explain this defense anymore. I just can't. I don't know what Jason Christ is doing because it's not really the midfield. Things are gelling there. It's this back line. I don't know whether they're trying a different philosophy and holding it through shape, trying to press. I just don't get it. Did Dwyer play with him up front again? or No, wasn't a whole lot of Dwyer. He, he was just kind of, eh. He did play quite a bit in the All-Star game. So. He did, so I, I kind of expected that. So, I, that wasn't a real concern. And again, because Laren scored, I'm like, okay, all is at least somewhat right. So, Fair enough. Hey, but Orlando, I told you they were not done spending. And they went and signed Peruvian designated player Yoshimar Yotun. That... Some of these names, I mean... I was waiting for that. I... Wow. 
That, I swear, that almost sounds like an anime character. Well, Yoshi, you know, you can put the big green dinosaur right there. And... It's... You know what? I have a brilliant idea, but I'm not giving away my ideas anymore. I've given away way too much gold for nobody to respond to. So, no, I'm going to keep this brilliant marketing to myself for once. Well, just put it out there for yourself and like, hey... Here's uh, here's our marketing idea for uh, Yoshi Mario Tun, who's 27, and uh, from Kaio Peru, he's was playing for Malmo in Sweden. I have no idea that that even existed in Sweden, but uh, fair enough. He's made 64 caps for Peru. And he can play left back and left midfield. So. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. This works. And yes, that Swedish club just does exist. Rem- You'd be surprised. Just like today, I stumbled upon a Liga match with Dijon. Very upset that they weren't wearing mustard colored jerseys, but uh, you can't win them all. I mean, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that they had already made that decision of we're not going to do that just because our name is Dijon. I mean, they had, like, mustard-colored numbers from the looks of things. Why not just go all out? I mean, he did play at the uh, Copa America Centenario. So, you know. Good, yeah. good. I mean, Again, he's played especially- as a number eight before. He's not a number ten, so... No, and I mean, particularly in the defense, that's where we would need the most help right now. Transition him, especially if the diamond formation sticks around, have him on the left wing, see what he can do from there, but we we need a boost in the back four, first and foremost. And you do have uh, the GM saying that they have enough TAM to convert him to a TAM player and add another DP if they want. All right. I'm liking this. CDC United, this is the kind of position you want to be in to start making these moves and trying. When you, you know, already won a few games. (laughs) God, this hate him for making moves or anything. (laughs) Uh, Speaking of Chicago, I forgot to mention this we were talking about Chicago. David Akam is still getting offers from teams. This time it's Hanover 96 uh, who do have a history with American players. Uh, uh, Mr. Chirundo played for Hanover 96 for a long time. Uh, So at this time, this offer could even reach four million for a com. At some point here, the fire might have to just take the offer. It's yeah. gonna start getting high. I know they still want Juan Quintero to come in before he leaves, but that may not happen. No, I mean while overlapping is good, four million dollars is better. <laughs> I mean, I mean, at this point, if the offers, they keep going higher, keep going higher, say if it goes into the five or six range, at some point, you just got to take the money and run. Exactly. You got to not just take the money and run, just take the money and go, okay, here, like, fine, we needed them, but can't really say no to that money right now. Mm Mm-mm. I mean, look, David Akam is very influential for the Chicago Fire. He makes great runs for them. He is tremendous at finding the right pass. He scores goals. No wonder another team wouldn't want him. Uh, no doubt about that, you know, the Ghanaian. But just Chicago at some point, you got to think about it and go, we could probably be still be okay without him, even though you could see that they didn't miss him in the previous game. They played. No, they didn't really miss Not him. this one. Not this but, one. The one before. Yeah. Yeah, the one before they didn't miss him, but 
they were glad to have him, and he was very integral for this blowout win, but I don't know. It You really got to look into the psychology of the front office. I just don't want them to have the offers go up too high, and then you miss out. Right, then somebody just says, you know what, we're not offering this much. We're just going to come in and offer you like $2 million for him, and you either take it or leave. Mm-hmm. And then he goes off on a free if he wants. Exactly. Unless they want to go and pull that player option thing, which I guess they could, but that'd just kind of be... There, I guess I, that would kind of be like the franchise tag thing. Like, come on, man. No. There, there's a lot of number crunching going on. A lot. So Colorado blows the lead uh, because they decide to sit back after they go up 2-1. And Vancouver equalizes and then gets a draw away from home. In in the rain, no less. In Colorado, which is worse for Paulo Mastrini here. I mean, a lot of people were saying Vancouver was down and out at one point, and they're making waves, and they were right below that line. Yeah, and then getting that equalizing goal, that was in another a bit of a bum rush situation. And it's just like I said with Orlando, you can't mess around defensively, especially late. I would have liked to have seen Colorado go a little bit on more than on or on the attack, get a third goal to really secure, but no, they didn't. And they have like two or three games in hand, too. So mm-hmm. You can see Vancouver go way up the ranks and really make this a Cascadia push between Portland, Seattle, and and uh, Vancouver if they want. So, you know, they're three points off of that four-way tie for second right now. Mm-hmm. And with games in hand, that's dangerous. That's that's really dangerous if you're the the rest of the West. Be careful here. Yeah, like I said, one through seven separated by just six points. They're that seventh team. San Jose and Columbus. San Jose get their a very crucial win here, beating Columbus at home. Yeah, uh, great early goal by Urania. War, as I like to say, someone not Wondolowski. <laughs> and I, I, look, they're finally starting to listen to me on a more regular basis. And as, as you can see, it's paying off. Well, you're not wrong. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I think it's funny that it's like with somebody not one of us, Keith. Exactly. Uh, That's how it seems to be in San Jose. It's either Wondolowski or not Wondolowski. That Chris Leach experiment continues to improve here for San Jose, but they did well in the two-game homestand. Now they got to go away from home where they've dropped quite a few. They are they only have two wins away from Avaya Stadium. So... Yeah, they got to pick this up if they want to continue to be above that line right now. They do, and I'm kind of curious as to how they will. Wondolowski, man. Wondolowski. Uh, ideally not Wondolowski. You know, someone else. <laughs> uh, Rain, you, you know, mind. you've already done it. You can, you know, keep doing that. You yeah, know, Osin could get in there. Tommy Thompson was wonderful in this game, by the way. Uh, probably his best as part of San Jose. So, you know, kudos to him. Want to continue to see that uh, from the man. Real Salt Lake keep getting points, and they're at 26 right now as they draw nil nil going to Houston. Uh, they had chances, let me tell you. But they couldn't put him away as Houston decided they were just going to hunker in. Yeah, but but Houston couldn't put away theirs either. I mean, it was just kind of, eh. 
It was one of those to where Houston decided, all right, we're going to have to keep this a box-to-box match. RSL happily obliged. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad that RSL has been positive since my pecky move. You know, everything's worked for him but the copier. <laughs> and I love that rant. That was great. Uh, you know. I can't wait till he has a VAR moment in his game. Oh, and God. Then, <laughs> and then we get to have another rant from him or something. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Uh, Portland, they had a VAR moment of their own here. As go for them and against them as Jesse Zardes. Why? Why and why again are you putting your arm up? Did you Both forget that there's rest. VAR? Both of them. They're, yeah, they're going to catch you. They're mm-hmm. going to catch you. And exactly what they did here, Justin Zardes puts up both his arms to help the ball go towards his feet. And then he scores. Well, there's hold up on the play. We go to VAR. The referee checks. Goal disallowed. And then later on, Fernando Adi. It's, it, this one was not clear and obvious. So No. No. Uh, but Fernando Adi goes down. You can see where a penalty could have been called. There was quite a few of those, uh, even in the later matches in the NYC and Red Bulls, and even in the Sporting and Atlanta match uh, as well. There's some they even called a penalty that they could have called back if they wanted to. There's one that they, you know, could have not called. Uh, so, uh, but still, the, this one helps out Portland who go from having it be 2-1 to 1-1. Then Jermaine Jones pulls a stupid move to decide to go for a big old tackle, misses Valeri, then Valeri goes through and hits a banger of a goal. And Portland win. That, That was freakish. And oh, by the way, to go back to the VAR moment with Zardes... They're like, oh, no, handball on the goal. Oh, and you pushed a guy? Yellow card. Love that. Love it. (laughs) Yeah, I looked at that, and as soon as I saw it, I'm like, yeah, no, this will not end well. Portland was like, all right, we're at home. Let's put the lumberjack guy whose name I cannot remember to work. Yeah, and at least they're they're coming back in form here, Portland. Again, making it interesting in that West and LA Galaxy, who are hoping for a playoff run. The <laughs> those opportunities are getting less and less at this point. And we end this with one hell of a game: NYCFC against New York Red Bull, Hudson River Derby. It's always with these get with these two. And it's the David Villa and Bradley Wright Phillips show. I mean, in what the is there first, to say? In the first 15 minutes, there were two yellow cards. Maxi Morales is now going to be out for the match against L.A. because he picked up one of the two. And you had Royer take a divot out of the pitch trying to make a move. And you could hear him screaming right on TV, writhing around in pain. And again, that was just the first 15 minutes. Then everything else happened. Villa with his first career hat trick, including one on a penalty. You had a late sending off the last few minutes for Red Bulls. I mean, it was insane. Yeah, very much like our Darby should have been. Insane stuff going on. Uh, Villa with a hat trick. That second goal was just a thing of beauty. Just running up, mm-hmm. making Aaron Long look like an idiot. And then scoring. A BWP had some good ones too. He'd just be there in the box. And then Sean Johnson would dive and he wouldn't even be close. So, yeah. You know. Uh- I mean, as you said, it was their show via, oh, man. He's like, yo, I'm going to fall down. Oh, I'm still going to kick it, and I'm going to score a goal. Whatever. Yeah, 
And so then now the last he's one, Nikolic and everybody else. So Zizo, Zizo, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like you basically, you went for a ball that was way too high with your foot. Go for it yep. with your head. That's not a foul. You go and kick your foot out, and you basically almost hit him in the face. They're gonna call that. I'm pretty sure they did hit him in the face. It's just hard because you're seeing it from behind. And you can't really see if it ever makes contact with his face. They don't have a camera right there. They need to have like a goal camera. Like one that like has a camera that focuses outward. So you could maybe see a lot more things. Because I mean I guess that was also the referee's view. So good on him I guess for seeing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just man that was it was difficult to see any of that uh, happening there. And he was the one who wound up getting sent off. Because of another terrible tackle he made the last couple of minutes of uh, regulation time. Yep. So it's like, what are you, why, go home, go home. <laughs> and that, uh, he would at least to go to the benches. So here are the, pretty much the standings here at the end of, uh, Toronto FC still hold a three-point lead over the Chicago Fire with 44 points. The Chicago Fire at 41 NYCFC hold on with 40. And then the New York Red Bull at 35, along with Atlanta at 35. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then Columbus holding on to that sixth spot at 32 after their loss. Then it's Orlando, Philadelphia, separated by a point. Montreal, New England, and D.C. United lowly down there with 19 points. Uh, mm. Montreal also has games in hand here. So, Orlando, Philadelphia, Columbus, watch it. Be careful. Yeah, Orlando, you know, Orlando's got to pick up the pace. They, after the great start they had of the season, they ain't been winning much. And then you get to Sporting KC with a three-point lead over that quadruplet of teams so at 37. Uh, Houston Dynamo, FC Dallas, Seattle Sounders, and Portland Timbers all at 34. San Jose holding on at 32 with the sixth spot above the line. Vancouver at 31 right there. And then Real Salt Lake at 26. And then the Galaxy, Minnesota, and Colorado all separated by a point each, 23, 22, and 21. Not looking good for them. There's starting to be a separation uh, from those guys, especially if Real Salt Lake can get another win. Uh, Colorado does have games in hand, though, so uh, if they could turn some of those into wins, uh, they can be in a much better spot, but if they don't, woo, not good for the Rapids. No, I mean, again, they have performance, well, I can't even say they have performances like they did against Vancouver, they can go ahead and make a push, but something's got to click. Certainly, yeah, definitely got to have something click there if you're Colorado, got to stop losing leads and also just play better. Uh, play better. Stop sitting back when you uh, know you don't need to. Uh, of course, the Women's Euro final was this morning. Woo! And what a game this was. 4-2. The Netherlands win on home soil to become the European champions. First time Germany hasn't won in six tries. Bad news, though, for the Washington Spirit as midfielder Lynn Skiverson Jensen tore her ACL in the oh. semifinal. And she is out for the rest of the season. So. Oh. Oh. She played for Denmark. She didn't even get to play in Denmark's final because of that. So Bad to worse for the spirit. Nadia Nadim at least got to score the penalty that started things off, but then the Netherlands really just kind of put the foot on the gas after that. Denmark equalized again, but then they... they Took off and won four two. This was I. I was listening to it at work. I had it on, and from the first minute to the last, it was a thriller. Definitely one you should. I mean, if you have that, uh, if you have a, just go watch it again on Watch ESPN. 
or ESPN yes. three. It's definitely worth the two hours. It was it was one hell of a game. It was really fun getting to see the home team win. That crowd over there had lots of fun. The the Royal folks were there. Everybody was there. It was a huge deal for the women. Just what a great moment for the Euro final there. Very good. And as you said, first non-German winner of the Euros since 93. Yep. This is going this is going to shake up a lot of the FIFA Women's World Rankings and this just proves there's a lot more parity and a lot more competition with women's European soccer and can't wait to see how this would set up as far as a World Cup qualifying over the next couple of years. Yeah, just that World Cup is going to be so much fun with how these teams are improving, what we saw from Australia. We know how Brazil get on. You know, Japan's still good. Denmark was fantastic in this game as well. Uh, you know, and some of the older, the, the teams that, you know, have always been good are starting to kind of take a downturn and they're getting replaced by other teams. And, you know, U.S. women's national team needs to keep up here because... They might get surpassed completely, the World Cup champions. So, right now, uh, they, look, again, I'm going to go ahead and just say that since Rachel isn't here, we're not going to uh, spend the time we would normally, but I'm still going to go through and discuss some things here. Uh, sad news, though, for... The Houston Dash, as they lose their first number one goalkeeper, Lydia Williams. That's Australia's Lydia Williams, as she has a grade one quadricep strain in her right thigh, and she is out for a month. Ooh. So, uh, she only played in that first game uh, for Australia, and then she got the injury. So... Uh, sad news there, but they've already yeah. got a replacement, hopefully. But uh, let's get into uh, these games here. North Carolina Courage remain on top of the standings as they defeated the Seattle Reign 1-0. Uh, let's see who scored. Lynn Williams scored her first goal of the season uh, in front of 5,000 there. At uh, Salem Stadium in uh, North Carolina, so good. Uh, they, they've been, yeah, they've been drawing some pretty good crowds, especially as the season's built on. So it's very encouraging. And that area of North Carolina always been a bit of a soccer hotbed, so so no real surprise, and it's looking well for the team and for the league. Yeah, and uh, Lauren Barnes and. Christian Nairn also got their 100th games in the NWSL uh, after stepping on the pits for Seattle here. So, pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. And, Very um, nice way to celebrate a milestone. Always nice if you can celebrate those milestones, you know? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's not like a 100th cap with the same squad, but still, uh, really yeah. cool for the league to see women... Uh, getting 100th appearances and everything for, for squads. Uh, North Carolina holds a slim, slimmest of margins one-point lead as uh, Orlando and Chicago drew 1-1 here. Alex Morgan uh, got a goal for uh, Orlando here after she scored in that last goal in the Tournament of Nations. And then also, you had uh, uh, Huerta score for the uh, Chicago Red for, Stars. Yeah, so why can't I? I, could, I don't know why I couldn't remember <laughs> the name of this team right now. Red Stars. Uh, but yeah, Alex Morgan scored early in the 24th minute, and uh, Huerta scored later to tie it up at the 53rd minute. And it ended up 1-1, so point each for both. Not too bad. 
Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Now, I'm going to have a, a great dynamic partnership with Alex Morgan and Marta now that both are finding their scoring boots late in the season. So, the Pride are primed to make a run. Yeah, there was a ridiculous uh, corner by Marta in this game as well in the 87th minute. She, like, had, she took, it was one of these, like, Roberto Carlos corners. She took the corner, it bent in, almost like it was going to go in. It, that has a name, and I can't remember. It has a... Olimpico. Yeah, okay, that's what it is. The Olimpico. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, they had Jemiah Fields and Elena Kennedy take shots. They got blocked. Uh, and then uh, they didn't call the handball, though, that happened after Tony Presley took a shot. Ali Krieger took a shot, and that was blocked as well. So four shots off that corner in the 87 minute. Orlando had opportunities, but just did not get it in. It's just kind of sad to hear uh, for Orlando. There was 5,000 at that Orlando Stadium though for for that game. I, so good attendance again, again. Yeah, bigger names, getting some bigger crowds. A little bit of an unlucky ending, but yeah, sometimes them's kind of the breaks. Yeah, Portland defeated the Dash. What's new? Somebody beating the Dash uh, hmm. 2-1 as there was 18,000 here at the Providence Park for this one. Now, now kudos to them for suffering through the heat because, yeah. God, it has been hot in the Pacific Northwest. It's been crazy in the Pacific Northwest how hot it's been. Just yeah. insane. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Emily Sonnet scored the first goal in the 12th minute, and then Tyler Lucy scored her first in the VSL goal and had an assist uh, as well in the 39th to make it 2-0. You had Houston get uh, pull one back, and it's actually the Dash's first loss since uh, Carly Lord debuted for for Houston, so... Uh, yeah. Well, you know, you're going to lose some. You, you, you are. And again, it was just kind of unfortunate timing. Portland has been a bit of the better team this season, so this just happens. How'd you like them having Carly Lloyd there for the... Uh, was it the... Uh, it was, yeah, it was the NYC... And Red Bull game? I mean, I thought it was kind of cool. I mean, yeah, having her there for a big derby like that, she wound up seeing a hell of a match. So it's a good thing keeping the exposure, okay, just being out there. I thought it was cool. Yeah, and the uh, Boston Breakers and Kansas City... Uh, or FC Kansas City wind up uh, drawing 2-2 here as uh, Rosie White with two goals from Boston. Uh, but they still have not won, uh, which is kind of uh, sad for the Breakers, really, as they are still hurting without Rose Lavelle. But at least they didn't lose. They've been on a four-game losing streak since then. Uh, and KC was also without Becky Sarver and Sidney LaRue because of them being at the Tournament of Nations. And uh, Boston didn't have Abby Smith or Margaret Purse either. So, that being yeah. said, still honorable the still, way they played. Oh, yeah. Still a very valiant effort without their big stars. Again, as you say, you snap a four game losing streak, was always important. Let that draw give you momentum to where you can turn that into a win. Yeah, you had uh, Megan Kelly score. I think it was for uh, Kansas City. And, yeah, it was Kansas City having to come back from uh, from 2-1 down to get the uh, get the goal by Erica 
Timurak to get the win, and Sidney Miramontes, who just signed for them on uh, Wednesday, sent that cross in, so good for her to just sign and already make a place for the team. Yeah, always great when you have new signings come in and make an immediate impact because you know, A, you did something right, and B, you can continue to build your team. Yeah, and then the Washington Spirit had a big blowout win over Sky Blue uh, to, I don't think this cap things off, but of course, they were, uh, they didn't, neither both teams are missing their U.S. Women's National Team uh, scores. And, of course, Sky Blue were without Sam Kerr, and that's a huge deal. Uh, Sam Kerr has been lighting it up in the Tournament of Nations. She's been lighting it up for uh, the, the in, in the NWSL. So that's really uh, a bad one for Sky Blue. And they felt it here, even though... And they, they were also without Kelly O'Hara, but then Mallory Pugh is not here for the Spirit. But they still were able to score... Uh, four goals as uh, that's that's a pretty big accomplishment in NWSL. You don't see too many of these huge, especially from a team like Washington. That makes right. it even bigger. <laughs> uh, Ariel Ship put in a goal. Uh, Maggie Dodery Do- 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 Howard uh, scored as well, and yeah. Havana Solon even scored a penalty, so uh, big win for Washington puts them in ninth place right now, and yeah, that's gonna kind of do it for the coverage on NVSL. You have North Carolina Courage, Chicago Red Stars, and Portland all separated by a point, uh, with Carolina in first, Chicago second, Portland in third, Seattle a little bit down at 24 points. Sky Blue 23, Orlando and Dash, which is tied at 20, and then it kind of goes down from there. So I did want to make this note here for the NWSL team of July, since I think this is our first, well, normally on Sundays when we talk about NWSL, our first uh, podcast since then. Jane Campbell, who you can read Rachel talk about in her latest on WTNet.com about Jill Ellis giving more goalkeepers a chance for the U.S. Women's National Team. She is voted as the goalkeeper of the month for plays for the Houston Dash. Taylor Smith, Abby Dahlkamper, and Casey Short, who all represented the U.S. at the Tournament of Nations, are on this squad along with... Uh, Casey Short, of course, plays for the Red Stars, and Taylor Smith and Abby Dahl Camper plays uh, play for the Courage. Amber Brooks of the Dash is also in there at center back. Marta McCall uh, Zerboni and Julie Ertz and Andresinia are making the midfield. So Orlando Pride, Carolina, North Carolina Courage, Chicago Red Stars for Julie Ertz and Andresinia plays for the Dash. And then Megan Rapino, who's been absolutely on fire, along with Sam Kerr uh, up top. So, and not a, not a bad team at all for July. No, not bad at all. Furthering Rachel's argument as well in terms of terms of goalkeepers, and really had the teams or the players that really separated themselves for their teams throughout the month. So, I can't make too many complaints. And before we head out, Eric, uh, Arsenal won the Community Shield this morning on a new penalty system. The AVA penalty system, as the uh, announcers kept loving to say. Uh, it's really just A-B- ABBA. But, you know, I felt like they shouldn't be playing Dancing Queen or something every time they wanted to say AVA. But... Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, think about it. Sometimes you just got to take a chance on a certain system. Sometimes. Yeah. That's that's what the... <laughs> Look, you, you beat me to Dancing Queen, so I had to have that one in as a backup. Aye, mamma mia. So, uh, 
Oh, I'm, I'm not going to keep quoting ABBA songs here. <laughs> my my dad liked ABBA when I was uh, little, so, you know, I had to hear my fair share. Plus, I've seen, uh, not only the movie, I've seen the the musical in, in person. So, uh, that's another story for another day. Anyway. No judgment here. <sighs> Hey, you know, the girlfriend I had at the time likes musicals. What am I going to... She turned me into a person that winds up like... You know, I wound up going to a Final Fantasy Orchestra thing uh, later with a friend as well. So, can't say that it was a bad experience. Got got more culture, you know, so that's, that's not bad. Sure. But anyway, uh, the penalty system of starting with one goal and then going on to have the other team shoot twice and then it goes back to the first team for them to shoot twice and then so on and so forth this is supposedly to help so that the first the team that goes first wins 60 percent of the time off the penalty kick this helped because arsenal was the second team and they won do you like this new system I mean, uh, I'm going... shooting one instead of shooting one penalty after another. You shoot one and then shoot two. I mean, I'm going to admit this was the first time I was hearing about it, and I had heard that it's been trialed in a few other places, and you're going to have it in a few other competitions in England, in the Championship, the playoffs, and I think it's not just the... England. I think it's kind of all over Europe. They're doing this. Really? Because yeah. I've heard specifically with England, they're the Football League Cup, the League Championship, and then the Premier League Promotion Playoffs. We're going to see this system. In hearing about it and seeing it, I admit I like it. They did liken it to tennis to where first service and then service every two points, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it helps. It's a little bit more fluidity because you don't have to change after every single kicker, so that helps the shootout go a little bit faster. I like to see it a little bit more often. Yeah, I liked it. It's obviously confusing for the crowd who was not told anything. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think... It adds something different, right? That's that's kind of what you want. You want to add a little wrinkle now that you got to think about. You've got to you've got to think about like who you want to send out there because they go one after the other instead of having to wait for the other team to go. If you're a goalkeeper, you've got to be able. If you immediately let in a goal, you got to snap out of it and be able to try to make the save immediately on the second one. So. I like this. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot of strategy involved there. Yeah. A, a, a lot more chess kind of an aspect to this. So, mm-hmm. again, I would love to see it more and see how pl- coaches change up their lineups for it. So, yeah, I can get behind this. Totally. Totally. So, thumbs up. So far for the for the new penalty system and kind of funny that they had to use it in, already in the first game that they could have used it in uh, the community shield. Uh, I listened to the whole game and then I have gone back and watched about the thirty like thirty the first half and Lacassette had a few good moments for Arsenal their new signing there and. Chelsea is, I think, going to be hard to beat again. So, sadly for uh, our Manchester United, this. Oh, uh, the special one's got to get back to being the special one that we despised so much. Because now he's on our side. Yeah, I, I think he had a good first season. Now you just got to. They're they're in the Champions League. Now let's get into the act- one of the top four spots, and then I think the next year we can think about the the league or whatever. But yeah, next week it's already starting. Are you excited at all for? 
I I'm excited, especially because I've been able to see some of the preseason. But I gotta tell you, it's August is one thing, and I'm excited. But usually September, October, once you get some matches under your belt, that's when I really get enthusiasm because it's like, okay, we figured out some things. Now we can really start going after it. Yeah, you've seen the team play for a little bit. You know what the new signings have been like. You're kind of knowing if you should be excited or not for the team. So, mm-hmm. I feel you there. I feel you on that. So, yeah, just between the Women's Zero and the Community Shield on this Sunday was a pretty fun uh, day for European soccer. Then you had MLS had a terrific game with NYCFC. And the Red Bulls, you had uh, the Galaxy, and Portland had the VAR usage. Uh, plus, that was a a good game as well. And you know, Atlanta, K, you know, Sporting KC kind of was. Eh, I don't know about that. It didn't end eh. on the greatest note. But no. still, uh, a fun day for soccer. Yeah, I mean, it's overall, especially for you're getting into. Really, the last third of the season, teams are starting to jockey for position, really racing towards that red line. It it was pretty good. It was that quality that you expect from this time of year, at least for the most part. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, I I love the fact that we found out really late, like we found out, I think, on Thursday that ESPN has the rights to the championship this season, and I found myself watching a couple, a few games. Uh, I saw I saw that, and I'm like, yeah, the, the, there's a couple of teams, because there's always some lower division teams that I keep track of, you know, your AFC Wimbledon, Brighton and Hove Albion, who they had a friendly against Atletico, and a few others, Sheffield Wednesday, so I gotta look and see which divisions they're in for this season so I can tune in myself. Didn't Brighton Hove Albion get promoted? I think they did. Yeah. So, because it, it's, um, it's, what, Huddersfield Town? Mm-hmm. Brighton Hove Albion and Newcastle. So, gonna be fun to see Newcastle back in the prime again. Yes, and to think, Brighton and Hove Albion, they were the first of only two teams to go of top flight season undefeated. Oh, that's happened before? But I mean, when yeah. was this? Like... 1889, Oh, come on now. No, <laughs> like... but I'm, I am serious. There was only 12 teams. They played 22 games, but that was when the league... Think about it. The FA Cup was contested for the first time in 1881. So when you're talking, the league was brand new. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I don't know about that happening in, like, the modern era, though. Arsenal. It... Oh, that's right. Arsenal did it, yeah. Yeah, that's why I said they were the first of two. Arsenal was the other. They did it back in 0203. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. That's before my time watching the league. I started watching in 06. So, I saw a, I watched like that Community Shield preview and I saw a goal from then. I think it was like John Anarisa scoring. I was like, oh God, I probably remember watching that game. <laughs> so, back in 11 years ago. Oof. 19 years old. Looking at that going, man, EPL, pretty awesome. Uh, So, all right, I think that's going to do it for us here on Soccer to the Max for the weekend edition. Uh, Hopefully you enjoyed what you heard, and you give us a subscribe or a rate and review or a comment on WTMNet.com. You can also listen to us now on the Last Word FC radio as part of Last Word on Sports, so if you subscribe to the Last Word FC, not only get us, but you also get the the awesome uh, Last Word Soccer Club, uh, which uh, Matt Pollard and Daniel Sperry do a great job also breaking down MLS and uh, uh, U.S. Men's National Team and other things. Uh, we 
kind of got a special thing, you know, covering the women's side as well with Rachel. So uh, that gives them something that they don't cover that, that helps us. Uh, but, yeah, make sure you check out uh, everything over there. They have a wonderful crew of writers uh, as well. And, yeah, so, you know, check out everything. Uh, give us a shout on wherever you listen to us at. And we'll be back on Wednesday talking the first semifinal of the U.S. Open Cup, sporting KC and San Jose as they await who wins between FC Cincinnati and the Red Bulls in the final. And we'll also, that's the only game that night, so thankfully for us, we don't have to watch a zillion games or anything. Exactly. That means I can get back to recording like normal. (laughs) (laughs) And then we can, uh, yeah, also talk whatever news has been going on. And Oh, I think the NWSL does have a game, though. It might actually be. Let me check. I think it might actually be Orlando too. I'm not yeah, sure. it, 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 if it's on Go ninety, if oh, it's you know it Go- probably is on Go ninety. You know how this works. Oh, with Go- yes, it is. It's Orlando and Washington on Go ninety oh, at seven thirty. Yeah. Actually, no, that's on Tuesday. So we'll have a we can talk about that game too. But you got a couple of days to watch it. True. Go 90. <laughs> Steven, or not Steven, whoops. I mean, Steven uh, and I had a little argument on Twitter, so that's why I had uh, his name in my head. But yeah, Eric, not a big fan of Go 90. I don't know anybody that's like a huge fan of Go 90. Uh, I do like that they have different kinds of soccer on Go 90, just I'm not a big fan of the app. But uh, beyond that, yeah, make sure you check us out. Next time we'll be with you is on Wednesday night. Talk about that NWSL game. Uh, Orlando, Washington should be fun. And also the Sporting KC and San Jose US Open Cup game and then whatever else is going on. So until then, we'll see you later, everybody. Peace. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.